बोले सर यस हेलो हेलो सर वी कैन हियर यू यू कैन स्विच ऑन द वीडियो इट विल बी यूजफुल but uh your device is muted tell me when to start so we can start we are ready good morning and welcome all we'll be starting this session now on behalf of uh, wilson college physics department and iept sub regional council i welcome you all again i also welcome today's speaker dr dinesh kumar and uh, uh, he is going to talk us about gravitational gravity anomalies and its measurements and interpretations friends dr dinesh kumar is a professor and chairman of department of geophysics at kurukshetra university he has multiple ass assignments he is also a director of iqac at kurukshetra university similarly a dean of research and development wing of kurukshetra university he is also working as a coordinator for nac uh, Uh, steering committee at uh, same university kurukshetra university he has also he was also a chairman for department of geology at kurukshetra university from december 2011 to december 2014 mainly the specialization of dr dinesh kumar is seismology and seismic hazards he has a teaching experience of more than 33 years and he has in his credit about 95 papers research papers out of which 52 are in peer journals and 43 are from conferences and seminars he has guided and supervised eight phd projects phd thesis and also is having credit of supervising 60 mtech dissertations and at the same time he completed five projects till today out of which three were at national level from dst and two are from international level as i said he is a, a man working for iq working as a iqsc director 
but at the same time he is also assisting the other colleges and university he is also a member of iqac at choudhury bansilal university bhiwani choudhury ranveer singh university jind dayal singh college karnal jc bose university and Sci uh, university of science and technology faridabad Dr. B. B. R. Ambedkar, National Law University, Sonipat, and Sri Vishwakarma Skill University, Paliwal. So, welcome you, sir, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhalle, for introducing me. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Uh, Good morning to all of you, and I am thankful to Dr. Bhalle for introducing me so nicely to the audience. So, before I start my presentation, I am thankful to Dr. Mahesh Shethi also, who has invited me for delivering a talk on gravity anomaly, its measurement and uh, interpretation techniques. So, uh, I hope that uh, all the students will enjoy this talk. So let me share my screen, then I will proceed. Sir, I will request you to adjust the my uh, this video uh, camera. Your face is not completely visible. Okay, uh, ultimately okay, I will you. off yes, this yes, video sure. camera. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Yes, visible. Uh, is my screen is visible? Yes, sir, it, it is, is visible. visible and we can use. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. So, my today's topic is gravity anomalies, measurement techniques, processing and interpretation. So, as I belong to uh, geophysics department, so little bit, uh, first two, three slides, I will tell to the students that what the geophysics is about and then what are the its methods and then particularly I will emphasize on the gravity method of the geophysics which explores the interior of the earth. So geophysics mainly that it is the uh, to study the interior of the earth with the help of the uh, principles of physics. Uh, uh, so to discover the hidden features of the interior of the earth. So in it includes the oil, groundwater, minerals, or some other aspects also like earthquakes and volcano. The difference between physics and geophysics is that basically we are using the principles of physics, but now our uh, system is earth, not any, means, uh, any other system, but it is the earth. So we are applying the principles of the physics to the earth. And purpose is to study the deep interior of the earth. As the students might be knowing that the radius of the earth is around 6400 kilometer so directly no one can go inside the earth to see that what is there at what depth so indirectly we have to send some signal inside the earth and record that signal at the surface and by analyzing those signal we will come to know we have come to know that what are the internal structure of the earth so whatever boundaries we know about the interior of the earth, like crust and mental boundary, mental and core boundary, what is the depth of the boundary between the crust and mental, mental and core, all this has become possible because of the application of the geophysics, principles of the physics when we apply to the earth to study the interior of the earth. So that is the geophysics broadly. So like... Uh, this man is trying to observe the vibrations inside the earth that where there is a water where there is a oil where there are some minerals or ore bodies so ore bodies for student perspective i might i would like to say that ore body is that geological body from where we extract the minerals minerals which are useful for the society 
So ultimately, one of the purpose of the gravity method is that to to locate and to the depth at what depth the ore body is available, so that mining can start in that area to extract the minerals. So physically, as this man is trying to observe the vibrations, that to it it wants to he wants to listen that where there is a oil, where there is a water. But uh, the man has a limitations; he cannot listen up to the deep interior. So instead of this man, we, what we do, we send some signal inside the earth and then record those signals at the surface and then we analyze those signals to know about the interior. So like for example, seismology, as I said, this is the one of the important branch of the uh, geophysics. We know that the inner core of the earth is solid. Uh, inner core is at about, uh, you can say, 5,000 kilometers from the surface of the earth. But how do we come to know that inner core is solid? Because as I have said that we cannot go directly inside the earth because of increase in temperature and pressure. Uh, uh, we cannot go inside the earth. Then how do we know? So this is, you can say that whenever earthquake occurs on one part of the earth and we record those waves at the other part of the earth at the surface. So by analyzing these waves, we can say that through which medium these waves have passed through. What is the nature of that medium? Whether that nature is solid, nature is liquid or nature is fluid. So whatever it is, so by analyzing the waves of the earthquake, which have been generated naturally and they have passed through the deep interior of the earth and then they have been recorded at the surface. So by analyzing these seismograms or uh, record of the earthquakes, we have come to know that uh, what is the depth of the inner core and it is a solid. This also by analyzing these waves, we have come to know that inner core is solid while the outer core is the uh, fluid in nature. So this is the this is the one example that uh, how exciting this branch of geophysics is that we want to know the depth of the inner core where which we cannot see directly, but we are analyzing those by by uh, we we are getting the depth of the outer core inner core by analyzing the signals which are coming from the earth. So that is all about the geophysics. So when we talk about the Geophysical methods. So in geophysical methods, we can categorize into these two methods. One is what we call natural source geophysical method and another is the artificial source geophysical methods. In natural source geophysical methods, we do not send any signal naturally. We do not, artificially, we do not send any source or any signal. Like in case of earthquake, so source is natural because we are not sending any type of the waves inside the earth but it is a natural occurring. So when it when we record at the surface, then we analyze those waves. Similarly, gravity method. Gravity method is also a natural source because we are measuring the gravitational value at the surface of the earth with the help of our instrument, which we call gravity meter. In magnetic method, we measure the magnetic field of the earth. In seismology, as I have said, we measure the earthquake waves. But we are having a artificial geophysical methods also in seismic method, what we do, we send the waves inside the earth by exploiting some dynamite at the surface. Those waves generated by the dynamite, like ONGC is doing oil exploration using the seismic method. We send the signal by exploring, by exploding the dynamite at the surface and those waves will go inside the earth and it will be recorded at the surface. Similarly, in electrical method, we send the electric currents inside the earth. In exploration seismology, seismic methods, all these are the artificial source geophysical methods. And today we will be uh, focusing on the gravity method only, which is a natural source geophysical methods. And in addition to that, uh, uh, in the methods which, we, which I have just shown, given the name, these are the surface geophysical methods where our instruments are on the surface, source is also on the surface. But there is a, another set of methods which we call well logging. In well logging, we drill a borehole at the surface up to certain depth. Then we insert our instrument inside the borehole. And then we record the physical properties of the interior of the earth material, which whatever is available, which, whatever is there, we record the physical properties and then analyze them. 
So this is known as a well logging method of the geophysics. So in, in every geophysical method, we are exploiting the physical properties because we know that uh, Earth is not homogeneous, meaning thereby is that the physical properties are changing with depth as well as laterally also, horizontally also. So wherever there is a change in the density, it means the gravity value will change, mass will change. So that variation has been ex exploited in the gravity method. Similarly, variation in the magnetic properties of the material of the earth, that is the basic principle of the magnetic method. So every geophysical method is exploring the or exploiting the variation in the physical properties of the earth material. So gravity method basically is used to to know the depth of the our body, to know the dimension of the our body. Our body means that from where we extract the minerals. And it has a some application in oil exploration, exploration also. Because when we do the oil exploration, like ONGC, Oil India Limited, or some other companies they are doing, so they want to know some geological structures like fault and fold, whether they are present or not. So gravity method is a useful method to to have a, some idea that in which region the fault is there or geological structures are there, where there is a possibility of oil can be there. Similarly, in magnetic method, in seismic method, we go for the contrast, acoustic impedance contrast, that is a density into velocity. For groundwater exploration, we use the electrical method. In this electrical method, we send the electric current inside the earth and then measure the resistivity. So like in some area that uh, if we want to drill a well for water, we drill a well, but there is no water. So by using electrical method of geophysics, we can tell the farmer that if you drill at this particular point, then there may be a possibility of the water. So by measuring the resistivity, by measuring the electric current at the surface, in geophysical electrical method, we, we, can, we can say that on these locations, the possibility of water may be there. So this is just a pictorial presentation that how seismic method is there. So this is actual scenario. This is our instrument. These are the cables. We So with the help of this, it is sending the signal inside the earth. So when signal goes inside the earth, it reflect back or reflect back depending on the contrast in the velocity or in the acoustic impedance. So we are recording the signals at the surface. So by analyzing those records, we will come to know that whether oil is present and if, at what depth it is present and what is the depth of the bedrock. Similarly, in electrical method, we send the electrical current inside the earth with the help of our system, our instrument, which is on the surface. So this is the actual scenario on the surface of the earth. Cables are there, electrodes are there. So we are sending the current inside the earth and then measuring the uh, 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 voltage as well as resistance and the resistivity. So it will tell us about the possibility of the groundwater inside the earth. Similarly, in gravity methods, sir, so this is our... Sir, I... Hello? Uh, can, I mean, will you take questions now or later? Uh, uh, what is your practice, Miss? Uh, maybe later so on? It is, it is whatever is convenient to resource person. So... Okay. So let us say afterwards, after the completion of lecture. Okay, sir. Uh, then, then that will be more appropriate, I think, one by one. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay. So in gravity method, this is our instrument that is we call gravity meter, which is used to measure the gravity field of the earth. And this is on the actual earth, actual case on the surface of the earth, gravity meter. And we are measuring the gravity value at the surface. So in every geophysical method, these three steps are there. One is that we go to the field to acquire the data. If we are going for a gravity data, we take our instrument because it is a portable instrument. We go to the field and acquire the gravitational field. Then we do the data processing, signal processing, whatever it is. So we add the lab and then the data interpretation. So these are the basic steps of any geophysical method. So if we consider, let us say, digital signal processing and versus earth system. So in digital signal processing, so this system may be anything. It may be a filter. It may be any instrument. So in the instrument, we have some input and we record some output. But in case of geophysics, system is replaced by the earth. So 
we give some input like in electrical method there is a response of the earth we record some output and by analyzing that output we tell something about the earth so in some cases input is unknown like in case of a gravity method it is a natural we are not sending any energy or any signal inside the earth in gravity method we are just measuring the output we are measuring the gravitational field of the earth where input is unknown and response of the earth is also unknown so but we have a output in our hand so by analyzing output we have some idea how what is the nature of the earth and what is the nature of the input also so in gravity method basically this is a very broad picture it it may clear to the students also because you see that uh, this represents the surface of the earth and this is the interior subsurface so there is a no presence of ore body here there is no presence of ore body here density is rho 1 so if we measure the gravitational field here at the surface by putting our instrument here then here then here so when we plot this gravitational field so it is almost a straight line but whenever there is a some ore body present ore body present means there is a excess of mass as compared to the surrounding or deficiency of mass in that region as compared to the surrounding so the for ore body the density may be different from the surrounding it means that there is a density contrast for a some localized region whenever there is a presence of the ore body so ore body uh, it, in general it may be having a higher density as compared to the surrounding in some cases it may be having a lower density as compared to the surrounding main point here is that there is a lateral variation in the density so that lateral variation in the density will be depicted in the gravitational field which we measure at the surface so we put our instruments on the surface of the earth and move it first here then here then here so when we record it when we plot the record of those gravitational field so if there is a ore body it will be depicted here like this so when there is a no ore body so it means that there is no variation in the gravity from one point to another point so there is no excess mass or no deficiency of mass no variation of density but whenever there is a variation in the density that will be depicted in the gravitometer reading so by analyzing this we can say that at what depth the ore body is there and what is the dimension of the ore body what is the aerial extent of that ore body in the subsurface so this is the you can say the basic idea of a gravitational method but when we do the actual things things becomes a little bit uh, difficult also sometimes because uh, our uh, terrain is not horizontal as we are depicting here our surface is also not horizontal so the basic principle of gravity method is a well-known newton's law that we all know that this force of gravitation can be written in this way and uh, second law of newton is can be written in this way that a is the acceleration m is the mass but now we apply this law to the earth in case of earth one of the mass is the mass of the earth that is capital m and another point another mass is any object which is lying on the surface of the earth so between these two masses the gravitational force is given by this and then r this capital r becomes the radius of the earth distance between any object on the surface and the center of the earth that is r and second law because now small g as you know that it is a acceleration only but acceleration due to gravity due to earth so for two bodies for two objects we use the symbol a but when one of the body is earth itself then we use the symbol small g and capital g you know that it is a gravitational constant so little bit simplification so acceleration due to gravity can be written as g m by r square where capital m is the mass of the earth so this is the basic principle of the physics which we are using which we are exploiting in case of gravity method of earth so this is a simple cartoon which showing the difference between the speed and acceleration speed is the dis uh, difference in the position with time and but it is the difference in the speed with time that is the acceleration so as i have said that the basic principle is this one g is equal to g m by r square if students may note that in this formula uh, the gravitational or small g does not depend on the mass which is falling on the surface 
so that's why you might have uh, you might have studied in physics that uh, if we drop a piece of paper and a piece of a piece of a stone uh, from any height so according to this formula they will be reaching at the same time at the surface provided there is you no know, there should not be any other forces so if these two types of the object piece of paper as well as a uh, piece of stone if you fall if you drop them uh, under the force of gravity only, so they will reach at the same time. So that is the physical interpretation of uh, this formula, physical meaning of this formula, that acceleration is not depending on the mass of the object that is falling on the surface. In gravity method, the basic challenge is here is that these are the broad variation in the density of the earth materials. For air, for water, then for sedimentary rocks, or for sandstone, shale, if you can see that the variation is very small in the density. If variation is small in the density, it means that the variation in the gravity field will be very less. Major challenge in the gravity method is that how to, how to measure this change in the small variation in the density. So we are not interested in the absolute value of gravity. We are interested in the relative gravity because of a very small variation in the density values. Uh, our instrument should be very sensitive. It should be very sensitive. Uh, so like in this case, uh, this is again a cartoon that this area indicates that the density is low. This area indicates the density is high. So naturally, in this case, the gravity, gravity value which we are measuring at the surface, that will be more. So, but if we are able to measure the absolute gravity. On the other hand, even if we measure the density contrast, that uh, means the density of this shape uh, will be different from the uh, surrounding. So again, we will be getting the same one. So we are interested in the relative gravity. Relative gravity means difference of the gravity value at a particular point with respect to some other point. So that is a relative gravity. So we are not interested in the absolute gravity because the variation in the density is very small and it is it is always a challenge to measure that small variation in the density. So this is a typically more geological picture that if there is a sub uh, ore body, so the density is different from the other. Density means, whenever I say density, it means that mass, because you know that mass and density, they are directly related. So, okay, so mass of this ore body will be different from the surrounding, and that mass will affect the gravity value at the surface. So when we measure the gravity value at the surface, that mass will be depicted here, ore body. This is a one of the ore body. This is a what I say that fault. This is one of the geological structure which we see during the oil exploration. So in this area, the density is different as compared to on this side. This is a fault. fault. So when we measure the gravity value at the surface, our reading will be like this. So from the profile itself, from the reading itself, we can say that whether in the subsurface there is a fault, geological fault, or in the subsurface there is some ore body. So once we say that there is some ore body, then we want to know that what is the depth of the ore body, then we want to know that what is the aerial extent of that ore body in the subsurface. So this is a unit which we use in the uh, geophysics. So so one Galileo, GL, this Gal means Galileo after the name of that scientist and acceleration is centimeter per second square and ultimately because variation is very small. So the popular unit in geophysics for gravity is the milligals. So one Gal is one centimeter per second square and one milligal is 0 0.001 Gal. And another unit is the gravity unit. So one milligal is 10 gravity units and ultimately we we take the readings in the gravity meter in this unit, milligals. So milligals is 10 to the power minus 3 gals. Gal means centimeter per second square. So we know that our Earth is not a spherical, completely spherical or body. So on the equatorial radius is more as compared to the polar radius. So there is a difference of, uh, you know, that 21 kilometer in the radius. So if we measure the gravity value in the polar region or in the equatorial region, they are not same. These three factors are contributing distance factor because in case of a sphere, we know that uh, the mass of the sphere can be assumed as, a, as if it is concentrated at the center. 
So in the equatorial radius is more, therefore gravity will be less according to the uh, this formula. Gravity will be less in the equatorial region. But there is a mass factor also, there is a rotation factor also. When we combine the uh, uh, contribution of all these three factors, the net effect is that gravity value in the polar region is more. So that is a 983,000 milligals at the polar region and 978,000 milligals at the equatorial region. So gravity at the pole is more as compared to the equator. So this, this all of you might be knowing, particularly students also, that how the value of G varies with height and the depth. So uh, as we move away from the surface of the Earth, the gravity decreases. And ultimately, if you move further, 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 and you, you, you might be knowing the concept of the escape velocity also that ultimately the gravitational effect becomes zero at a particular height. And when you throw any object with the escape velocity, it will go beyond the gravitational effect of the Earth and it will never fall back to the surface. So, the, so it means that gravity is decreasing as we move away from the surface of the Earth. And similarly, in case of a homogeneous Earth, even if we moving towards the uh, center, the gravity is decreasing provided Earth is homogeneous. So this is a topography of some region, let us say, because topography is not flat. Sometimes it is a horizontal and there are mountains also. So we measure the gravity value at different points. So then it is a absolute gravity. But in the relative gravity, first we measure the gravity value. This is our gravity meter. We measure the gravity value at this point and then at the top of the mountain. So difference between these two will be a relative gravity. And at all other points, we are measuring the gravity value with respect to this one. So that is a relative gravity. So why it is important? Because suppose that there is a spherical ore body in a spherical shape. Its depth is 25 meter and radius is 10 meter. So when I plot this, it will be like this. And the maximum anomaly or maximum gravity is 0 0.025 milligals at this point. So this is, this is equivalent to one part in 40 into 10 raised to power 6. So we want to measure so much accuracy in case of a, a gravity method in geophysics to explore the ore body. So that's why uh, it is very difficult to measure the so small variation in the gravity. Why there is a very small variation in the gravity from one point to another point? Because the density variation in the different types of the rocks are very small. So that's why the variation is very small in gravity. Our instrument should be very sensitive to measure that one. So that's why we go for the relative gravity. So as far as absolute gravity is concerned, these are the simple methods we can measure. Now you can see that if we drop a ball or drop a piece from any height, we can measure the gravity value using this formula. But whether this G is accurate or not, it depends on the how accurate we have measured the X. That is the distance from which the object has been fallen and how accurately we, we have measured the T value, that is a time time taken by this object to reach at the surface. So if there is any error in the X, any error in the T, our G will be wrong. So that's why, so to, as far as geophysics is concerned, to measure X as accurate as to one part in 10 raised to power six. Similarly, to measure time one part in 100 into 10 raised to power six. So much accuracy is required in case of a geophysical gravity method to locate the ore body, to locate the minerals or some subsurface characteristics. Because in geophysics, we need this type of the equation in the value of G from one point to another point. So that's why we are not going for the absolute gravity. And these are the other methods of absolute gravity, pendulum methods. It is like a, that free fall mass from one height and we can measure G here. But again, it depends on that how accurate we are measuring T and how accurate the measuring L. And presently, the gravity meters are based on the spring mass system. In every gravity meter, there is a spring mass system. Wherever there is gravity is high, this mass will be stressed uh, as compared to the normal position. But to measure the G accurately, T should be very accurate and k that is a spring constant and it has been found that k cannot be determined accurately which is required as one part in 40 millions 
So that's why now it will clear that why we are going for the relative gravity. Suppose that we measure the gravity at site 1, that is a G1, T is let us say T1, spring constant is same, it, it may not be accurate, but it is the same. Then we, we take our gravity meter at another site, then it becomes G2, T2. So G1 and G2 are not accurate because K is not accurate. So whatever error is, error is there in the value of K, that has been propagated in the value of G1. The error in the value of same error has been propagated in G2 also. So if we say individually G1 is not correct, G2 is not correct. But when we take the difference, because same error has entered in the value G1 and G2. So individually they are not correct, but when we take the difference, then it becomes correct. Because difference between the G1 and G2 is correct. Because same error has been propagated in the value of G1 and G2. So therefore, difference will be correct. The individual values are not correct. So that's why we always go for the relative measurement in the gravity method in geophysics. So this is one definition that how we define because it is important to move further. If we define, if our earth is homogeneous, our uh, earth surface is like this and dash line, we call it a normal sophiroid. But if we consider that earth, there is a topography, there is a ocean, there is a mountains, then actual surface is what we call geoid. This is the topography. So on normal sophiroid, when there is no variation in the density, we can uh, we can calculate the theoretical gravity at the normal sophiroid using this formula. Phi is the latitude and G is the gravity value at the equator. So in this formula, you can see that there is a no term of the density because while deriving this formula, it is assuming that Earth is homogeneous. There is no variation in the density. But uh, if Earth is a four stationary sphere, we can calculate gravity in this way. And at the normal sophiroid, we can calculate in this way. That is a theoretical gravity value, assuming there is a no, no variation in the density. So in the gravity method, the major, major challenge is that to measure the variation in the density. But what happens that when we move from one point to another point, the topography is not same. It is a, let us say, very, uh, so at this point, we are near to the center as compared to this point. And we know that the gravity is universally proportional to the scale of the distance. So it means that at this point, the gravity will be low as compared to this point because of this distance factor. So gravity has been changed from this point to this point because the distance from the center has been changed of the gravity meter. This is not our objective because we want that gravity should change from one point to another point only because of the density contrast, not because of the any other factor. So if any factor which is contributing in changing the gravity value from one point to another point, that becomes noise for us. That becomes the noise in the gravity data. So all these are the factors which are changing the gravity value in addition to the density contrast. Drift, there may be a drift in the instrument, tides, elevation, elevation as I have said. Similarly, there is an extra mass which is lying between these two. So that will increase the gravity value from the other point. So all these factors which are contributing in changing the gravity value, in addition to the change in the density, that will be a noise. Because ultimately our objective is to know the change in the gravity value only when there should be a change in the density. Ultimately, uh, this will clear. Here we put our gravity meter, take the reading, then here we put our gravity meter. So this is a C level. This is C level. So what we want to know that we want to project all the values at the same level. Then we compare them. Then we compare them whether they are changing or not. Now from this point to this point, the gravity is changing because there is extra mass, mass will increase the gravity value. So there is a increase in the elevation that will decrease the gravity value because of this law. So all these factors are noise for us and our target is to measure the change in gravity value only due to the subsurface density contrast. Subsurface means the surface below the surface of the earth. Only that is our signal, otherwise all things are the noise. So that is what we do during the processing of the data we remove all these factors from the gravity data.
so these are the corrections to remove the effect of the all factors affecting the gravity values so these are the corrections drift correction latitude correction free year correction booger correction booger is the name of scientist then terrain correction isostatic correction tidal correction eotos correction so for every factor except density contrast we apply some correction so drift little bit just i give some uh, only a very broad idea drift means that if we take a reading at a particular station in the morning hours the value will be g1 let us say but uh, at the same point if we put our gravity meter in the evening hours we expect that gravity should be same at the same place gravity should be same but it has been found that gravity will change at the same point at the same site only difference of the difference of the time so within a 24 hours the subsurface geology is not going to change it means that whatever change we have observed at the same place within 24 hours that is because of something else so that is that is what we call drift in the instrument so why there is a drift in the instrument because our spring is not perfectly elastic because in every gravity meter there is a spring mass system and if our spring is not perfectly elastic, so it may change. There may be some effect of the temperature also on the spring mass system. And there may be a means mishandling of the gravity meter also. So this is a drift in the instrument, which we can remove uh, by, by reoccupying the one station again and again. So this is our base station on the surface. First, we take the reading here. We move to the next station, take the reading, move to the next station, move to the next station. Then we come back to the same station to note down that how much gravity value has been changed at the same place with time. So once we know that drift rate, we call it a drift rate, that the change in the gravity value at the same point with time, then we can correct all other readings. So we can remove the drift uh, 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 component of the reading which have been there due to the drift of the instrument. So the latitude correction, as we know that uh, gravity will change from pole to equator. Again, if we are doing the survey from pole direction to the equator direction, gravity value will change. This value, this change in gravity value will not be due to the subsurface density contrast, but it is because of the distance. So for that, we apply the latitude correction. Similarly, for free air correction, so we know that as we move away from the surface of the earth, the gravity value will decrease. So this decrease in gravity value has nothing to do with the density contrast in the subsurface. This is because of the change in the elevation of the gravity meter from one point to another point. So for this also, we have to apply some correction that is known as a free air correction. And with simple mathematics, it has been, uh, we have come to know that for every three meter upward from the surface of the earth, the gravity decrease about by one milligal. So this we know that 0 0.3086 milligal per meter gravity value will decrease. So we know this elevation of the gravity meter from mean sea level. We know this rate of the uh, decrease in gravity value. So we can calculate the free air correction and give, give to the observed value of the gravity. So this is the observed value of gravity with the gravity meter. This is a drift correction we have applied then we apply the free air correction using this formula. So once we apply the free air correction, it means that we have projected the value from this point to this point. Similarly, from this point to this point, this point to this point. So free air correction takes care of the elevation difference of the gravity meter from mean sea level. But then there is a mass also. This mass is also present between the position of the gravity meter and the mean sea level this mass will increase the gravity value. Our ore body is below mean sea level. Ore body is below mean sea level. So the mass which is lying between the mean sea level and the position of the gravity meter, that will increase the gravity value. Again, this is a noise for us. So for this, we apply a booger correction. So that is a 0 0.0419 rho h. So we apply the booger correction, then free air correction. So in this way, uh, because ultimately our aim is that to project all the gravity meter readings uh, at the mean sea level. What will be the gravity meter reading if our gravity meter position at the mean sea level? 
but because of the topography our gravity meters are at the different elevation when there is a different elevation mass will be there change in the elevation will be there so we are removing one factor by another factor ultimately when we project all the values at the same level so then we can compare them after that if there is a change if there is a variation then we can say that that variation is because of the subsurface density contrast so this is like that uh, uh, we cannot compare for student purpose i am explaining that we cannot compare the knowledge of a, a student of first year knowledge of a student in physics uh, or first year student with the knowledge of a student in the second year because they are not at the same level so we can compare the knowledge of physics of first year students among themselves we can compare knowledge of physics first year students among second year student but we cannot compare first year with the second year so ultimately we have to bring all the gravity values at the same level by removing all the factors except density contrast so then terrain correction it is a basically where where the topography is not flat there is undulations in the topography for that also we apply some type of the correction that is a terrain correction and this is because of the these are the derivation of the terrain corrections naturally we are not going into the derivation this, this, so we little bit skip but there is a correction due to the topography then gravity anomalies so there are two types of the gravity anomaly uh, one is the free air anomaly and then the other is the booger anomaly so free air anomaly this is the observed value of the gravity we apply the drift correction to remove the effect of the drift of the instrument we apply the free air correction to remove the effect of the elevation uh, difference of the gravity meter then this is a theoretical gravity value which we can calculate from the formula which we have explained on the normal sapphire so after applying all the corrections and then subtract it from the theoretical gravity value then we call it a anomaly this is a free air anomaly we have not applied the uh, booger, uh, booger correction here it is a free air anomaly anomaly means a deviation from the normal position so Th that will be a typical free anomaly curve and this is a let us say uh, our topography of a area this is our mean sea level this dotted line suppose that there is excess mass here or there is a deficiency of mass here excess mass means that its density is more as compared to the surrounding deficiency of mass is that its density is less as compared to the surrounding so we are doing the gravity survey first take reading here then reading here reading here because gravity meter is portable so we take our gravity meter to the field and do the gravity meter reading at different points on the topography. When we apply the correction, we have projected all the readings on the mean sea level mathematically. So then we plot this one. This is a free anomaly curve. You can see that wherever there is excess mass, uh, its value is uh, away. Uh, wherever there is a deficiency of mass, its value has been decreased. So in this way, by looking at the profile, we call it a profile. We look by 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 looking at the gravity profile, we can say that wherever where is the excess mass and where is the deficiency of mass. So where there is no excess or deficiency, it is almost normal. So this is a free air anomaly. But when we apply the Booger correction also, then it becomes a Booger anomaly. So basically, the final product of any gravity survey is the Booger anomaly. We conduct the gravity survey, we conduct the gravity survey, apply all the corrections, subtract the theoretical gravity value uh, from that, then whatever is left, that is a Booger anomaly. So Booger anomaly can be written as free year anomaly minus the Booger correction. So again, this is the difference between the free year anomaly and Booger anomaly. So ultimately, this solid line is our basic product or final product of any gravity survey we interpret this later on that but by looking at this profile we can say that at this position there is some excess mass at this position there is some deficiency of mass so this is a typical booger anomaly profile so this is a summary of corrections which i have discussed so far so far that this is a topography of area this is you can say deficiency of mass in case of a marine gravity survey and this is a mean sea level so we apply a free air correction during a land gravity survey we apply a booger correction 
at C, we apply a freer collection is not required because in the coastal region, we are already on the on at the mean sea level. So at mean sea level, H becomes zero. So no need of the free air correction. But bore correction at C is required because of there is a deficiency of uh, mass here in the ocean. So these are the formulas we, which I have just explained. We can calculate the theoretical gravity value using this formula. Then we subtract it from the observed gravity value after applying the correction. If we, apply, if we do not apply a bugger correction, then it is a free air anomaly. If we apply a bugger correction, it becomes a bugger anomaly. And bugger anomaly is the final product of output of the gravity survey. So this is a typical contour map which shows the bugger anomaly map. Bugger anomaly sometimes is known as a bugger gravity also. So what we do that we take the gravity meter readings at two dimensional first at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point, then along this direction also, we measure the gravity value in a two directional uh, area. And then we calculate the bugger anomaly at every point, every site, wherever we have taken the reading, then we contour them. So once we contour them, this is the typical uh, bugger gravity map of a region. Then we interpret in terms of a in terms of the ore body, presence of the ore body, which will be available, which will be clear from the density contrast or from this one. So this is a isostasy. This is another application of the gravity survey that in mountain, because we know that uh, uh, the depth uh, isostasy means that equilibrium of the crustal rock. Uh, if you might have heard the Maho discontinuity, which separate the crust and the mantle. So at the average depth of the Maho discontinuity is 33 kilometer. But in the below the mountain, it has been found that like in Himalaya, below the Himalaya, the thickness of the crust is around 70 kilometer. So it means that Maho, so this, is, this can be explained by the isostasy, concept of the isostasy, that wherever there is a mountain, the low density material has gone deep inside the earth to compensate that excess mass which is there in the on the surface. So we can say that this is a isostatic compens uh, compensation is there or they are in the equilibrium. So these are the two models that explains the concept of the isostasy. So Bugger anomaly will help us that whether the mountain is compensated by the mountain root or not in that area. So if Bugger anomaly is zero, it means that it is uncompensated. It has not been compensated. But in this case, if there is a mountain, it is being compensated by the uh, low density material going deep inside the earth. So it is a compensated excess of mass above sea level is compensated by the low density material below that. So by looking at the Bugger anomaly, we can see that whether it is a isostatically compensated or not compensated. This is also the same one in a different way. Then another, another feature of the Bugger anomaly is that it tells us about the thickness of the crust in a particular area. For example, let us say uh, this is a geological structure. This one, this is a mountain, let us say, and this is the main sea level, and this is the ocean deficiency of mass. So we are conducting the gravity survey on, the, on this area, let us say. Okay, for, for example, that at this position, we take the gravity value. So at this position, the contribution from the crust as well as all the masses are, com are contributing in the reading of the gravity meter. So up to this level, uh, the gravity meter reading, uh, uh, this level, the material which is lying between this point and this point, they are contributing to the reading of the gravity meter. So low density has a more effect on the gravity meter reading because thickness is here more as compared to the uh, high density material. So that's why reading is low. So it means that when the thickness of the crust is more, reading becomes low. On the other hand, at this position, the high density material is more, low density material is less. So that's why the reading is high. So contribution of high density material is more in this case at this position C. So it means that Bugger anomaly tells us about the thickness of the crust. Wherever the Bugger anomaly is low, thickness of the crust is more. Wherever the Bugger anomaly is high, the thickness of crust is less. So that is how, in addition to the ore body, 
Bugger anomaly curve will also help us to have an idea about the thickness of the crust in that area. Then, in, as far as interpretation is concerned, one more important point here is the which we call regional and residual gravity anomalies. So, meaning thereby is that, for the for example, in this case, when we conduct the gravity survey, our ore body is here, let us say spherical type ore body, but the contribution of the mass, because it is a natural source method, we have no control on the depth. Contribution of the mass which is lying between the position of the gravity meter up to the center. So they are also contributing in the reading of the gravity meter. But we are interested in the ore bodies only during gravity survey. So it means that the contribution from the shallow depths are also there in the gravity meter reading. From the deep depth also it is there. So that portion of the gravity anomaly which is coming from the shallow depth that we call a residual gravity anomaly. And that portion which is coming from the deeper depth, that is a regional gravity anomaly. So in a local gravity survey, we are interested in the residual gravity anomaly, not the regional one. So that's why before final interpretation, we have to separate them. That what is the residual one, which is coming from the shallow depth features, and what is the regional one, which is coming from the deeper depth features. And for the ore body exploration, we are not interested in the deeper depth we are interested only at the shallow depth because ore bodies are present up to let us say 4 kilometer, 10 kilometer or 7 kilometer, but radius of the earth is 6400 kilometer. So we are not interested in knowing the gravity contribution which are coming from the deep features. So we are interested in the shallow one. So we have to remove the effect of the regional from the Bugger anomaly. So that's why there are some methods that is because Bugger anomaly is a regional as well as residual. We are interested in the residual. We are not interested in the regional for a local gravity survey. We have to remove the effect of the regional. For that, these are the methods, graphical methods, analytical methods are also there, direct computation, secondary. Ultimately, just you keep in mind that in a Bugger anomaly, there are two contributions. One contribution is from the deeper features of the earth. Another contribution is from the shallow feature. Our bodies are lying at the shallow depths. So we are interested in the shallow features. Shallow features is known as a residual gravity anomaly. So like this is because of a, some shallow feature. But it is being masked by the regional feature, which is coming from the deeper depth. So that becomes a noise for us. So we have to separate them. And these are the methods to separate the residual and the regional one. So this is just an example that uh, this is our total gravity anomaly. Then we plot a regional. So when we subtract it, then we get the residual. So once we get the residual, then we can interpret that. What is the depth of the ore body? What is the uh, dimension of the ore body? We can interpret in that way. So this is another example that how, how, the, how to separate the residual and regional one from the Bugger anomaly. So this was, this was the original map, Bugger gravity map. Then we plot the original one, then we subtract it. Ultimately, this becomes our residual anomaly. Then for interpreting the gravity data, first of all, we should know that how the gravity profile looks like for a simple shape's body. Suppose that this is the ore body which is present in the subsurface. So this can be approximated, this can be approximated by a sphere. This can be approximated by a simple shape, geometric shape, sphere. This is another type of the geological uh, body. This can be approximated by a vertical cylinder. This is another type of the ore body. This can be approximated by a combination of three spheres. So we want to know the gravity effect of a geometrical shape which will help us in the interpretation. So like for a spherical ore body, the if we drive the formula, formula will be like this. For a spherical ore body, the gravity value can be written as this one, 4 pi r cube. Delta rho is the density contrast. Z is the depth of the ore body. X is the position of the uh, gravity meter. This point, this point, this point, this point, and Z is the depth. So ultimately, for a spherical ore body, the gravity profile looks like this one looks like this one. So wherever there is a ore body, this is our profile. For a spherical ore body, this is one. Then we, uh, okay, 
then for uh, this, uh, this is another uh, this is just a uh, means explanation of the spherical lower body that at x is equal to zero the gravity becomes maximum and as we move from the over body uh, here and there then it, it it decreases like this so this b is for the spherical lower body b and this a profile is for spherical so naturally this spheric this spherical lower body is at a shallower depth as compared to the deeper depth so the maximum value has decreased so this is a typical shape of a gravity profile due to a spherical or body. So when we go to the survey, do the gravity survey, we plot this type of the profile. And by looking at the shape of the profile, we can say that corresponding to which type of the or body, this profile is there. So this profile has been plotted after applying all the corrections, then after separating the residual from the regional one. So this is a typical, you can see here that this is typical spherical or body for the different values of the density contrast and the Z, it can be like this. And this is for a horizontal cylinder. For horizontal cylinder, if there is a fault type structure that can be approximated by a horizontal cylinder. So when we calculate a little bit trigonometry we use and ultimately for horizontal cylinder, this will be the formula to calculate the gravity effect of a horizontal cylinder. And this is a typical shape. So if you compare it with the uh, spherical or body, you will find that in case of a spherical or body, uh, the, the width of the profile was not uh, large as compared to the cylindrical. For horizontal cylinder, the width is more. But for a spherical or body, the width, is, width of the profile is less. Similarly, this is for vertical cylinder, uh, we can uh, derive some formula and plot the shape. And this is also for vertical cylinder and ultimately this is the summary of the uh, formulas for the spherical or body. This is the typical shape and for a horizontal cylinder, this is the formula we can derive and this is the typical shape of the gravity profile at the surface. And for vertical cylinder, this is the typical profile. So what is the advantage of these shapes? these profile because when we go to the field we again plot the profile so by looking at the shape of the profile we can say that whether that profile is corresponding to a horizontal cylinder type body or it is corresponding to a spherical type or body in the subsurface so once we decide that this is because of a spherical type or body then we go for the interpretation then we go for the depth as well as the depth that determination and the dimension also so this is for a typical uh, horizontal slab. So when we go for ultimately, it will help us. I go to the next one, this one. This is a typical geometry that we call fault in the geology. So if there is a fault in the sub sub subsurface, then profile will be like this. Gravity profile will be like this. When there is a fault in the subsurface, this will be the gravity. So this is different from the spherical or body, different from the cylindrical, horizontal, as well as vertical. So by looking at the profile, field profile in actual way, we can, first we have to decide that corresponding to which type of the ore body or which type of the geological structure this profile is there. And then we can interpret that profile in terms of the depth, in terms of the dimension. So this is again gravity effect due to a fault. So this is these, all these are the mathematics. So we should not go in detail for the mathematical derivation. This is the interpretation. So once we know that gravity profile is because of the spherical or body, then what we do, we note down the maximum value of the gravity. Then we come, come down to this axis. We note down the point where the maximum becomes half. So at this point, the maximum gravity value becomes half. Then this width of, width of the profile is known as the half width. So this half width is related with the depth of the ore body. So this x half, we can note down from the profile of the gravity, what is the x half? x half is the that value of the profile where the gravity maximum is half. So we note down this x half, multiply it by 1.3, it will give you the rough idea of the depth of the ore body. So from the profile, we can calculate the depth. So once we know the depth, we can calculate the dimension. Dimension means that we want to calculate the R, that is the radius of the ore body. Once we calculate the radius, then we can calculate the area. 
So why we are interested to know the aerial extent of the ore body? Because ultimately we have to decide that once ore body is present, whether we should go for mining or not in that area to extract the minerals. And mining is also a very costly business. And if the aerial extent of the ore body is not large, so it means that it will, it will not be cost effective because the expenditure on the mining will be more as compared to the actual value of the minerals which are there in the ore body. So that's why it is very important to know the dimension also, to know the aerial extent of the ore body also that whether it is economically viable or not for mining in that area or extracting the minerals in that area. So with the help of this, we can calculate the dimension because Z we have estimated and then this maximum value we can know from the profile and then we can cal calculate the dimension. Similarly for horizontal cylinder also, uh, Z is given by the X half and then we can calculate the dimension in this case. So this is the summary of the parameters, how we, how we can estimate for a different types of the ore bodies. For a spherical ore body, we can calculate uh, uh, in this formula, depth is given by 1.3 x half, then we can calculate the dimension. For a horizontal cylinder, depth is directly x half. x half, remember that from the G maximum, we come to the half maximum, we note down the width of the profile, then we multiply with some constant to get the depth. So once we know the depth, all these are constant. G maximum can be read from the profile. We can calculate R. We have to assume the density contrast because we know the little bit density of the rock materials. Similarly for horizontal vertical cylinder, it is like this one. So this will give us a rough idea of the depth and the dimension of the ore body. And ultimately we go for uh, uh, this is one one irregular ore bodies. Note down the slope of that profile in this case and for 3D bodies similarly we can calculate depth depth is less than 0.65 and this ratio so for irregular ore bodies we apply such type of the formulas uh, to interpret the gravity anomalies and finally there is an indirect interpretation whatever formula i have discussed that is for the uh, broad idea or rough idea of the depth and the dimension and finally we go for the indirect interpretation so in this case what we do uh, this is our observed data dotted one then we calculate using formula theoretical formula we calculate this one then we compare these two so if they are not matching then we then we change our parameters density contrast depth and the dimension to plot the calculated data again so because observed data, we cannot change. We go on changing the calculated data. We go on changing the values of the parameter until unless the theoretical value becomes the uh, same as the observed value. So whatever parameters have been used to plot that theoretical value, which is matching with the observed one, those parameters can be fixed. Those parameters can be finalized. So in this case, this we call the indirect interpretation. So I think uh, uh, I, uh, I have completed, this was my last slide. So I thank you all for listening me carefully and patiently. So if there is any doubt or any query, I will I would like to, uh, and I will try to satisfy that. Yes, sir. There are some questions in chat box. Okay, in chat box, let me see. Uh, the first question is for electrical method, typically up to yes. what depth probes are put inside the earth? Actually, it depends on the source that for how many, what is the source of our electric current? If it is a large, then it may go up to the deeper depth. But for ground, because electrical method, the uh, our main objective is to explore for the groundwater. So groundwater is up to 100 meter or 200 meter, depending on the area. So it is always at the shallow depth. So 
uh, depth you can say it may go up to 150 meter the current depending on the uh, source which we are applying there because ultimately we have to send the current inside the earth through some electrode then we record the potential and using the ohms law we calculate the resistance and from the resistance we calculate the resistivity and resistivity curve will give idea about the about the presence of the groundwater there yeah. uh, there is one uh, another question yeah why air drag is not being considered in wet drop method and pendulum methods no, actually the PPT which I have shown that depicts only the principle of the gravity meter. Ultimately, when gravity meter is designed, this system is in a thermostat uh, uh, box. There is no effect of temperature, effect is very minimum. It is almost a vacuum type condition in the gravity meter. So whatever I have shown, that is just to depict the principle of the gravity meter and that to the absolute gravity. It is always considered while designing the gravity meter. It is always there. It is always there. Uh, the next question, although it is not uh, related to Earth, it mentions, does the moon's and sun's gravity also changes and gravity measured? If yes, yes. how to correct it? Yes, definitely it changes because uh, when I, if you, if that student recall that, Tidal correction, I have given a little bit idea. Drift correction and tidal correction. So tidal because of the gravitational effect between moon and the uh, earth or between sun and the earth. Because when whenever there are tides, the position of the gravity meter will change, for, distance will change from the uh, center of the earth. And mean, uh, an important point for tides is that uh, they are predictable we can know that when the tides will be there and when there will be no tides. So what we do, when we apply the drift correction, we reoccupy the same station after regular interval of time to know that how much gravity value has been changed at the same place due to tides or due to the drift. So when we apply the drift correction, it will take care of the tidal effect also. Uh, Yes, sir. Um, Is it clear to that person who has raised this question? You can you can you can put the question in chat if it is not possible to talk to you. Yeah. The we'll take by that time we'll take a next question. Yeah. The next question says it in gravity measurements if there are some if there somehow a earthquake happens then how it would affect the measurements during any during the measurements suppose any other disturbances are there yes other disturbances are always noise for the gravity method so if earthquake happens let us say because in earthquake uh, the ground will vibrate so when ground will vibrate the position of the gravity meter will change from the center of the earth distance will change so that distance will change then our reading will change so definitely we have to reject that data means we cannot go for interpretation for that data we have to go to that uh, position again next day so to measure the gravity value again so ultimately the purpose of all the corrections which i have discussed briefly purpose of the correction is to remove all the factors which are changing the gravity value except one factor that is the density contrast so that is our signal all other factors are noise for every type of the noise there are different corrections so particularly in case of earthquake, we, we have to reject that data because for that we cannot correct that data. We have to reoccupy that station after two, three days again to get the correct data. Okay. Uh, now uh, the relative gravity, uh, relative anomaly means whatever the difference we are measuring, Yes. it will be different for different minerals such as oil and gold, uh, uh, iron or ore, iron, uh, iron ore and so on. The question says, typically for a good one, good ore of say gold, how much gravity anomaly in order of magnitude and for oil? For oil? Yeah. Actually, the application of gravity for oil exploration is that uh, first we look for the geological structures. Uh, fault, fold, or some other structures 
which indicates the presence of the oil. So before going for a detailed uh, seismic method for oil exploration, ONGC or any other company will go for a gravity survey. So the purpose of gravity survey for, for the oil exploration is that to locate for the geological structure. Right. So once it is a geological structure is there, fault or fault, then they go for the detailed survey seismic method because seismic method in geophysics is a very costly as compared to the gravity method, gravity survey. So first we go for the gravity survey in oil exploration. So in that case, gravity method does not directly tell us that whether oil is not or there, oil is there or not. It will just tell us about the geological structure where there may be the possibility of oil is there. Then that can be confirmed using the seismic method. Because gravity method will tell us about the, uh, because it will respond, gravity meter will respond only to the change in the density, change in the mass. So that will tell us about whether fault is there or not, or fault is there or not. Once it is there, then we can go for the oil exploration method. And as far as ore body is concerned, as I have given one example also, that uh, the maximum value of the gravity in case of a different types of the rock bodies, it may be 0.25 milligals hmm. in case of the ore bodies. Yeah. The next question is, how were gravity anomalies measured for moon or Mars by orbiting probes? How, how gravity anomaly? Are measured for moon or Mars by orbiting probes. Uh, by orbiting probes. the same method is used for moon and uh, uh, Mars by orbiting probes. Actually, as far as the gravity meter which we are using uh, 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 at the surface of the Earth, the gravity meter is on the ground, but uh, we are doing the airborne gravity survey also. In airborne gravity survey, the gravity meter is on the moving platform on the aircraft. But in that case, uh, it will respond only if the density contrast is high in the moon moon subsurface or in the orbital surface. Density we have to measure. We have to measure only with the help of gravity meter only. But uh, that that gravity meter is in the moving position. So when it is in the moving position, we need one more correction that is known as a EOTOS correction. But principle is same. Same gravity meter will be there. In the or in the probe which will measure the gravity value or if sometimes it is possible to install the gravity meter on the moon itself on the surface of the moon then it will be more appropriate to know about the interior of the earth using the gravity values but at present it is not possible so i think if they are measuring they are uh, they are putting the gravity meter in the probe itself uh, now the question says which correction Will you spell out that correction? For moving, because yeah. when gravity, correction will be, uh, when the gravity meter is in the moving position, then we apply one correction, that is a EOTOS correction, which takes care of the uh, rotation of the that planet also, as well as the Earth also. For that, we apply EOTOS correction. You wanted to know the spelling. EOTOS is actually, it is a name of the scientist. <laughs> E O T What you mention in the methods? Uh, correction, yeah. dips. Yeah. E O T V O S, E O T O S correction. Okay. Sir, one more question. Yeah. Uh, profiling requires large number of readings. And uh, the gravity meter, what you are using, they use the old spring, spring mass method. Whether they are being electronic or made electronic and uh, uh, how the provision of data acquisition methods so that large amount of data will be collected uh, actually then uh, actually what happens that the gravity meter is a little bit costly from any institution it is let us say about 2 crores or 1.5 yeah. crore cost is there if you want to cover more points in a less time then always it is recommended that you purchase let us say 5 gravity meters one party will go along one line, another party mm -hmm. will go another line, third party will go another line. So in that way, we can gather the large amount of the data in less time. But in most of the cases, uh, because it is a costly, gravity meter is costly, 
so there is only one gravity meter or maximum two gravity meter with one party so that's why it takes some time but if you want to cover more point then one has to purchase more gravity meters that is the only way otherwise one for one it will take multiple number of readings for multiple times yes what we do that we take the gravity meter to the field we we put it there in a position take down the reading it may take 10 to 15 minutes gravity meter is portable we keep then we take the gravity meter go to the next position after distance of 10 meter or 20 meter again we put there so every reading will take 10 to 15 minutes so if yes. there are let us say 20 30 points along a profile so it may take let us say one day to cover that point cover that line only one line but but, but ultimately when, when 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 we do the gravity survey we have to cover a area so area means it may be 3 into 3 square kilometer or 4 into 4 or 4 into 5. Then it may take, let us say, 3 months or 4 months or sometimes 6 months also. Because all the points cannot be covered in a day. There are some limitations also going to the field. Sometimes, like in some areas, in northeast area or some other areas, it is advisable that don't go in the evening hours in any area, in that area. So they prefer to take the reading in the morning hours. So they, they are in the camp, they put a camp there, field camp. They Every morning they go with the gravity meter, collect the data, come back. Next day again go, the gravity, again go to the field, collect the data, come back. So like that it may take six or seven months if area is large. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, any other, I don't think any other question is there in the chat now. So, uh, friends, it was a very, very uh, wonderful lecture put up in a very simple and lucid term, starting with the basic principles of physics and which are being employed for uh, geophysics measurements, geophysical measurement. Uh, it was a nice uh, presentation in the way in which he has taken uh, uh, gradually, he has improved the uh, the depth of the depth of the topic and explain the terms where you require correction. For a particular example, I can give as a relative value. Why we need relative value? Why not absolute value? Because absolute value we generally normally used to measure with the help of simple experiments and so on. So these are the things which uh, the students will have to pay very important uh, uh, pay attention to. Uh, thank you, sir, because so many things you have explained, I will not repeat the thing, but uh, uh, I must uh, thank you on behalf of uh, Wilson College as well as the IAPT SRC 08B Mumbai. Uh, thanks again for your visit and we ex look forward for your same cooperation in future also. And thank you. all the participants, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Dr. Mholle. Thanks to Dr. Mahesh for inviting me. I also enjoyed you, uh, delivering talk. And I thank to all the students also who have listened to my talk. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mahesh, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all participants. Uh, we will meet in the uh, evening session at 4.30. Please join the link, uh, same link, uh, 4.15 onwards. Fill up the feedback form. And fill up the feedback form, which I have put here in the chat, also on our WhatsApp group. Uh, Shubham, we may stop recording and uh, we can end the meeting.